and we're going to come into Ustrasana. So pointing the toes, we're going to take the palms of the hands to the soles of the feet. You can modify here, create space for yourselves. If you want to be on the tippy toes, that's fine too. So from here, let's inhale the arms all the way up. Exhale, full circle, palms to soles. And then just keeping your drishti either forwards or up rather than dropping your head back. Encourage your pelvis forwards and encourage your chest up. Modify if you need to, hands to sacrum. So we go into modified leg of Vajrasana. So taking hold of the calf muscles, bending the elbows, take your elbows to the ground inside your feet, top of the head to the ground. And then letting yourself come down into Sutta Virasana. Extending the arms back behind you, keeping the knees as close together as possible, bum to the ground. From there, pressing into the elbows, coming up onto the hands. We're gonna lift up, knees together, toes pointed, extending through the arms. Neutralizing through the spine here, finding your natural curves again, just looking forwards. Really kind of pressing. So good contact and pressure between those thighs. Exhale the hands down. We'll take a slow vinny here, stepping back one leg at a time into Palakasana. Take an inhale here. Exhale very slowly. Give yourself about four or five counts to come down to Chaturanga. Inhale into Urdhva. Hopefully feeling much more open now. And exhaling into Adho and five breaths there. Inhale, waving forwards into Palakasana and exhale, slow lower down through Chaturanga Dandasana onto the floor. So from here, we're going to look down for Dhanurasana rather than looking up. And the purpose of this is so that we can really focus on opening the chest and stretching through the hip flexors. We're going to take hold of the insides, the big toe sides of the feet for this version. So from here, we're gonna windmill the right arm back, bend the right knee, take hold of the big toe side of that right foot. And then the same process, other side, windmill the left arm back, bend the left knee and take hold. Now bring your knees together, but with the positioning of the hands, we're gonna keep the feet apart, right? So normally the impulse is to do the opposite, to have the knees apart and the feet together. This is a really interesting way to get into a good back bend without dumping anything into the lumbar. So knees in, feet out. Looking down now, push the feet into the hands and lift the thighs. Now push the feet into the hands so much that you start to really feel the bicep stretching, inner elbow stretching, across the chest stretching. And then maybe lifting the thighs a little higher. Keep your chin tucked in, almost like Jalandharabandha. Now start to walk your hands down to your shins and dorsiflex the feet.
Now push the shin so much into the hands that the chest has to lift a bit more. And then slowly releasing down. Plant the hands beside the floating ribs, pointing the toes. Inhale to Urdhva. Exhale to Adho. Now we can really continue to use the openness we've created in the shoulders to push into down dog. See if you can get your head to the floor. And then from there, we're just going to jump through seated cross-legged position. From there, we're going to take hold of the ankles and lift up into easy bridge. Tucking the chin in. So it's almost an exact replica of where we've just been. Now releasing hold of your ankles and we're going to place the hands where they need to be for Urdhva Dhanurasana. From there, lifting up onto the top of the head. From there, place your hands so they're comfortable and straighten through your elbows. Look to the floor. Squeeze the shoulder blades down the back. Bend the elbows, gently kiss the head off the floor, and we go again. Pushing up one, two, three, four, five. Let the head come down, kiss the floor, not too much weight in, and then push back up last time. One, see if you can straighten the knees. Two, three, four, and five, tucking your chin in, extending the legs straight out in front of you, dorsiflex your feet, extend the arms straight out behind you, neutralizing the spine here, strong in Mula Bandha. Keeping the right leg long and strong, lifting the left leg up, taking hold of the left foot with both hands, gently drawing that leg in. Letting the lumbar spine come towards the floor, trying to keep as much of the back of your right leg on the ground as possible. So even if there's a little bit of space, resist down into that. Taking hold of the outside, that's the little toe side of your left foot with your right hand, roll onto the outside of the right foot and take your left leg across your body. Shift so that both shoulders are grounded, looking over that left arm. Coming back up, allowing your left leg now to come down and lifting the right leg up, taking hold of that right foot with both hands. Keeping your left leg now to be the base strength in this pose as you stretch into the right hamstrings, allowing the lumbar to come onto the ground, but maintaining that Mula Bandha support system. Taking the left hand to the pinky toe side of that right foot, drawing the leg across the body, coming onto the pinky toe side of your left foot, and then letting 
yourself twist to the right. Coming back up to center, this time lifting the left leg to meet the right leg, taking hold of both outsides of the feet with both hands. Keep your sacrum on the ground and draw the straight legs towards you. If that's not possible, of course, bending the knees is fine. If you're exploring this with straight legs, try to make the heels the highest point of your body, the closest bit of you to the ceiling. Squeeze the legs together. Let that translate through to a deeper strength, lifting the pelvic floor muscles more. Taking the hands down onto the ground and lifting very slowly with control up into Halasana from there. So keeping a sense of strength through the body. We're going to plant or flex the feet. Just shift from side to side so you come onto the outside edges of the shoulders and interlace the fingers for Halasana Plow Pose. Chin stays centre. You start to walk the feet back behind you a bit more. So basically a supine forward bend to counter a back bending. And then we bend the knees just hugging the side of the head with your knees. Keep the feet together for Karnapadasana, extending the elbows. 